Well, my biggest concern on this engine project was going to be pulling these two pulleys off. I'm doing this after the fact because I missed videoing it. And I just took a plain two-jaw puller on this one, and lo and behold, it slid right off. Now let's try this one. And look at that. I can hardly believe it. It's sliding right off. Coming right off. Look at that, and it's off. I guess you should always assume that everything's gonna be difficult. And the other pulley should go right on it. So all I really have to work, worry about is the belt on the other end for the hydraulic pump drive. Next, I wanna get that pulley off. First, the uh, pulley for the rope pull has to come off. And it looks like there's a pin down in it going through the shaft. And I've tried punching it, didn't wanna move. I think I'm gonna to have to get a long drill bit and try drilling that. In the meantime, I might pull the head off of the engine I'm gonna use to see what kind of condition it's in. So let's see if that head will come off of there quick. It is tight. That one feels a lot better. I think I'm gonna wait and give all of these some heat. Now, I removed the uh, must been automatic throttle up on the engine that was off the reefer unit. I'm guessing that's what it was. And now, I'm gonna take the carburetor off of it. 
See in the port there, see what it looks like in by the valve guide. And you can see I have the carburetor off. Now I'm gonna take the cover off where the valve tappets are under. It looks real nice under there. And the governor shaft feels nice and free. Who knows, maybe I wouldn't even had to have taken the top end of this engine apart. But I'm going to anyway, seeing the engine is out of it. I think I'm gonna put that cover back on right now for the time being. Now what I want to do is get some heat on the head bolts because I don't want to be twisting those off. Now I'm attempting to take the cooling shroud off. There's a bolt on this side and one on this side and those came out nicely. We have three more here. This is the one I'm concerned about that goes into aluminum. We know how they corrode into aluminum. If you look over here, I twisted one off there. I should have heated it. I got kind of over anxious. But that's no big issue. Running well, the cast iron comes out good. Let's see about the one that bolts into your aluminum head. Oh, that one's coming out good. This one's just three A's. Comes loose easy. We'll see if this will do it. And that one came out good. Let's see if the cooling shroud should come off. One cooling shroud off. It's all full of dirt in the bottom, so I'll be able to clean that out good. Now, I should be able to get heat on where the head bolts go into the cylinder real good all the way around. Well, let's see if something comes loose. Kind of weird. After heating now, there's water running out of the exhaust pipe. Well, that one came loose nice. That one came loose.
that one came loose. Uh-oh. That one snapped right off. Looks like I'll be drilling one. It didn't even give any warning. I just hit it and it snapped. are going good so far. <laughs> Two left. Oh, look at that looks real nice I can't even feel a wear mark a ridge in the top of the cylinder there is one little scratch there in the cylinder wall I'm gonna clean off the top of the piston because to be that came from a reefer and ran a lot and not have a wear mark on top of the cylinder. I'm going to check the top of the piston. See if this maybe has been bored oversized already. Well, so far I can't see anything on top of the piston, but I'll be getting the mic and micing it. Not that it makes any difference, but I'll pull a piston and see what kind of an end gap we got on the rings and clean everything up. Now, I'm going to try taking the head off of the this engine because I will probably be using this top shroud because it doesn't have the holes in it. I don't need those holes for the application here. And I'll be using this throttle mount from the original engine. And I might be using the carburetor and air cleaner from the original engine, I think. Because the carburetor points in that direction with the air cleaner up here the replacement engine the carburetor points this way and that way any air cleaner pipe would start to get in the way of my foot on the clutch so i'll probably be using this uh carburetor because everything is reversed on it as far as the controls from end to end but it kind of depends which one cleans up too but right now i'm going to get this throttle control off The throttle control and the throttle control is free now i wonder how tight these head bolts will be these head bolts seem to be coming well and all these head bolts seem to be coming right on so that heads off
Now this one's really nice and clean inside too. Oh, you can see the head gasket was getting, it's completely gone there in part of it, but it doesn't look like it had failed on the fire ring yet. But that gasket's no good. And this engine must have sat a long time at one time because there's, you can probably hear it with my fingernail. There's heavy pitting, heavy pitting in the cylinder walls. He said he'd have to crank it with elect, what he'd put a belt on it with electric motor to spin it fast enough to get it started. And that's probably why. So I'm sure glad I picked up that other engine. I only paid $25 for it. Well, I think that's gonna be it for today. I'll probably get back at it again a little bit tomorrow. See if I can get this this pulley off of here to put on the other engine. So it's starting to rain, I'm gonna cover it up and get inside. Thanks again for watching.